folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's a film that came out just 10 years ago, since June 7th, 2005. It's a direct-to-video comedy called simply Gank. That's right, which stars Kel Mitchell from Nickelodeon's All That and Keen and Kel, about an inspiring songwriter who just won a contest for his song at a record company only to be discovered that it's been stolen by a sexy singing sensation who's played by Bombay and he became simply ganked. So this is where he finally gets revenge on her for stealing his song and, and as well as his fame and fortune. Yeah, this is basically what this movie is all about. And this was at the time when Kel Mitchell was working on a dance show called Dance 360, which came out, I believe, in 2004. It aired on KCAL 9 in Los Angeles. And yeah, it was a show that's sort of like uh, a soul train f for dancers, which basically you see guys and gals uh, doing a lot of breakdancing moves, the 360 spins that they've been doing in order to win a prize. And I just learned that Kill was the host of the show. So I saw like maybe clips of it. And it was okay. Um, the show didn't last that long as far as I'm concerned. But I figured that's what he was doing after he left all that and Keen and Kill, Just to move on to bigger and better things. And he was doing a lot of those direct-to-video movies. You know, so everything from comedies to... Uh, action thrillers you know he's been doing a lot of that yeah because he has a family you know he was also doing commercials too he had a KFC commercial back in 2006 and I remember that commercial and he's also doing stand-up comedies now in at all these comedy clubs that he's been going to and in fact he's also been at a comedy club in Burbank a few times already by now and I'm actually very excited because I would definitely would love to meet him. So anyway, um, I just thought it'd be okay to review this film because it's one of those movies where, you know, it, it has some laughs here and there, mostly from Kill Mitchell. You know, he's sort of playing the material that he once played on all that. You know, so I was very familiar with that. And it has all that, too, in the film. And, and, I, and I thought this was interesting because, you know... I, I didn't really knew about this until I found this movie on DVD at the bargain bin at Kmart. And it, yeah, this DVD has, uh, you can see at the back where it has this. It has pretty cheap. Yep, you can see the. <laughs> the the CD cover and plus the special features have um, outtakes and deleted scenes on the back so yeah they have everything here not as much sadly but that's all we got so yeah so I'm gonna get right to it it stars Kill Mitchell who happens to be the executive producer and co-writer of the film and in a double role with Bombay Natalie Watano, Nora Felice, Lyric Mitchell, Allure Mitchell, Anna Marie Horsford, and who's been best known for the TV show Amen, Cat Williams, you know, a comedian who's been in other stuff, such as uh, Norbit and all these other shows, Yvette Wilson, Ken Mitchell, who's the director, and Antoine Tanner. It's written by Tisha Hampton, along with Kill Mitchell, and it's directed by Ken Michael. The movie begins when a young man named Rick Berry, or simply Ricky, who's played by Kill Mitchell, who dreams about his fame and fortune by becoming a very talented songwriter and a rapper with his trademark as his, his song debut, Buttery Hotness, <laughs> where he just rubs it all over his body. <laughs> and 
all the way around doing all of his crazy dance moves. But unfortunately, things aren't going so big in his entire life. He still lives with his struggling family, including his mother, Mrs. Barry, who's played by Anna Marie Horsford, and his best friends, a fuzzy-haired Billy, who's played by Antoine Tanner, and a quiet, fast-talking Marcus, who's played by Ken Michael, who happens to be the director of the film. All that seems to change when Ricky had found out that he won a a songwriting contest in the mail and he's now being chosen to go to a record company called Ross Records and meet a record executive and founder Shane Ross who's played by Cat Williams for recording his biggest debut but meanwhile Shane's daughter Kennedy Ross who's played by Bombay is a sexy singing sensation artist ready to find her next big album, the spider for cuteness, of course, and her jealousy. But by the time that she went into her recording session, she started singing very horribly and feels very miserable. But Fane seems to get much worse was when Ricky had went into Ross Records and suddenly landed as a job working at a mail room and gave his song to Kennedy. That's when Rick found out that he's been ganked after he heard his song on the radio that Kennedy recorded and stole all the lyrics and the tune as well without getting any credit from him whatsoever. Not to mention her song had become a huge hit topping up the charts. So it's up for his sweet revenge against her for stealing his chance of becoming famous and setting fans right, such as disguising himself as a fan, a burglar, and even a karate match. Since that didn't work out, Ricky had decided to kidnap Kennedy by hiring a professional from Africa, you know, using a tranquilizer to shoot her with, and then she was later unconscious and Ricky had took her back to her home so she could rest claiming that she thought that she was dead but she wasn't but then when she was awake she wants up in the bathroom and then realized how, of how much of a jerk she was to him and apologized for all the causes that she just made you know after you know feeling very jealous and the fact that she wants to become famous again and he accepted it until finally when the award ceremony had came along Kennedy was very delighted from her father Shane that she will continue to make hit albums and offering Rick to become her new songwriter and best friend yep <laughs> so that's what the movie is all about and it was alright uh, I mean, for a comedy like this, I knew exactly what Kill Mitchell was about to do. Um, I, I love some of the funny moments that they went in when Kill was actually disguised as a crazy fan, you know, with with red hair and, and glasses, <laughs> you know, as well as uh, becoming a burglar, too, <laughs> to go after uh, Kennedy. And while everything he did failed, he finally found a better solution by kidnapping her and... <laughs> Um, just by hiring a professional to tranquilize her. <laughs> yeah, and I, I remember too because there was a scene where Ricky was trying to tranquilize uh, Kennedy. He accidentally tranquilized uh, all of her friends. <laughs> and they're all laying down like flies. Yeah, that, that was a very funny scene. And of course, yeah, who could have forget the karate match scene, you know. Yeah, when Ricky went inside the karate studio just to find... You know, Kennedy. And, and by the way, it was located in Pasadena because I did recognize the background that has Michaels uh, as well as uh, Pep Boys and all these other places. Yeah, that was somewhere in Colorado where I used to go to uh, Pasadena City College and, and all, all that time I've been getting all these uh, art material 
from Michaels. Well, that's the scene where he went inside the karate studio trying to look for Kennedy until <laughs> Kennedy actually beat the shit out of Ricky. And that's what leads to the scene where it has that, uh, <laughs> that funny, awkward uh, kung fu type of a scene. And <laughs> we saw the, the shot that's in, uh, in film-like quality. Yeah, all sepia tone. And yeah, they were like fighting with each other until they later wound up doing uh, some salsa dancing. <laughs> and all, you know, they're trilling around and all that. That, that. that was just hilarious. But like I said, the movie does get slow at times. And none of which uh, didn't work. But I guess that's what they were going to go for. So yeah, Kill Mitchell was actually very good in this movie. You know. <laughs> Despite of the material that he had to get. You know, he's just doing all of his funny acts. I mean, he also plays his grandfather. You know, and almost seems similar to his Coach Creighton role and, and all that. <laughs> and they had a lot of great cast in here. Um, Anna Marie Horsford is, you know, very good as his mother. You know, Mrs. Barry, you know, hard to believe that she went from all the other shows she's been in to, to this movie. And she was very good. But Cat Williams, um, as Kennedy's father, who owns the the record company, you know, Ross Records, was very good. He's, he sort of looks almost a little bit like Snoop Dogg or something like that. Yeah, he does look like him, too. And, yeah, he's he's very inspiring, very funny, too. <laughs> And of course, Kennedy, who's played by Bombay, uh, is very sweet, sexy, and you know, she's also very funny too. <laughs> because I mean, she got to do something, you know, to, in order for her to become very famous. But Kill, of course, had to get his revenge on her just to get what he really wants in life, and that's true. I mean, I imagine that, considering how crazy that she is. Well, yeah, I mean, it it had its moments, though, and I admit it, it, it was cool. Also, the director, Ken Michael, who plays the fast-talking uh, and very quiet uh, Marcus, you know what I mean? Because he was, like, coming up with all these uh, funny dialogues that he had. Whenever Ricky opens the door, you know, knocking him just to find out what's going on. And his other best friend, uh, Billy, you know, has fuzzy hair all around. You know, is totally obsessed with Kennedy because I know he wants to to meet her because you know he loves all of her songs and all that. <laughs> he knew that he'll be able to have a chance that sort of way. But that's pretty much what the film's all about. It's all about you know getting revenge against someone who's been stealing your music after winning a contest that you thought this will be, you know the best thing in life but it all turns into a complete disaster yeah. um, definitely check it out especially if you love Kill Mitchell and I know I do and I agree I mean like I said before it's it's no good burger nor mystery man but it's a start so anyway I give the movie gank three stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.